Hello and welcome to the Weekly Outlook at XM.com. I'm Maria Pashurdis and joining me is Senior Investment Analyst Rafi Boyajian. We'll be taking a look at the week ahead. So Rafi, let's begin with Australia. It'll be a packed data week there with retail sales figures most likely grabbing the most attention. What reaction should we expect from the Aussie and what else will traders be keeping an eye on? So Maria, that is right. Uh, it's going to be a fairly busy week uh, in Australia and, uh, as far as domestic data is concerned. Uh, but like you said, uh, the focus will be pretty much on the retail sales numbers uh, because uh, it's going to be important to see whether or not uh, there was a strong rebound in consumption in May uh, as the country came out of lockdown. So forecasts are for a bounce of 6.3% month on month uh, in May. Uh, but the question is how much of a boost uh, will the data uh, be for the Australian dollar because we are now seeing uh, some risk aversion in the markets there. We've got um, growing fears of a second wave uh, hitting uh, uh, several parts uh, of the world. Uh, and uh, traders will also be keeping an eye on some Chinese PMI numbers uh, as well. So we're going to have both the official and the cash in uh, PMI out of China. Uh, uh, the manufacturing PMIs are both uh, expected to have eased slightly uh, in June. Uh, and if that turns out to be the case, then uh, that would uh, highlight uh, the challenge uh, possible challenges uh, facing uh, economies such as the Chinese one, which have um, may mostly contain the virus, uh, have come out of lockdown. Uh, but given the slow growth elsewhere uh, in, in the world, uh, their economies will also continue to struggle or at least uh, not or recover at a very slow pace. Okay, moving now to Japan. The Bank of Japan's quarterly tank and report will be the highlight there next week. What are we likely to learn from the report and how might the data impact the yen? Well, the tank and survey will uh, is expected to show a deterioration in business conditions uh, for the current quarter as well as the coming quarter. Uh, and this comes despite the fact that uh, Japan, uh, like Australia, didn't really see a huge outbreak of the coronavirus. Uh, but because it's a export oriented economy, uh, it is uh, still struggling during this uh, pandemic. Uh, and apart from the tank and survey, we're also going to have retail sales and industrial numbers out of Japan uh, and uh, we likely to see further declines in both industrial output and retail sales uh, in May. Uh, so again, uh, that's probably going to not, not bode well uh, for a uh, risk appetite. Uh, but as far as the Japanese yen is concerned, uh, it will continue to be uh, mainly determined by uh, market sentiment. So uh, we've had some risk off this week. So if, if in the coming week we see further deterioration uh, in uh, risk appetite uh, as those second wave fears intensify, uh, then the yen could appreciate further in the coming days. Okay, turning to the U.S. now, we'll get a bunch of data next week, uh, including the ISM manufacturing PMI on Wednesday and factory orders on Thursday. But of course, all eyes will be on the non-farm payrolls on Thursday. How significant will the jobs data be for the greenback? Well, the jobs report will, of course, be a very important uh, uh, because we are now seeing some doubts about the recovery, so the that big rally in stock markets, which was mainly, mainly being driven by those expectations that um, we're going to see a V-shaped recovery in most major economies. But now uh, the U.S. is seeing um, a trend of rising uh, daily virus cases uh, with several states recording record numbers, record daily numbers, as well as record number of hospital hospitalizations. So it's not looking too good for the U.S. Uh, at the moment. Uh, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not even if we were to get a strong jobs report for for June uh, on Thursday, uh, whether or not this will uh, help um, improve uh, or whether this will help calm market fears uh, about the recovery in the US. So the US economy probably added 3 million jobs in June. Uh, and uh, if we were to get an, a number slightly softer than that, then that would also um, add to those fears about a very slow recovery uh, in the US. Uh, but uh, looking at the US dollar, uh, it could, uh, it's likely to actually uh, decline against other currencies if the, the jobs report does manage to uh, help uh, revive a risk appetite. On the other hand, if we see continued concerns uh, about uh, the US economy, 
uh, that's where the question marks lie, whether it's going to continue to act as a safe haven or, or whether those rising fears of the, uh, the domestic economy will start to weigh on the dollar as well. Rafi, thanks so much. And thanks for joining us at XM.com.